We are so thrilled to be partnering with Hinge. Hinge is the dating app designed to be deleted. As you all know, I'm a huge Hinge advocate as I met my partner of almost three years on the app. Even before meeting him, Hinge was always my go-to app because I met more relationship-minded people here and had some great dates. Clearly, I haven't been on the app for a little while, but I re-downloaded it to check out some of the new features. One that stood out to me was the voice prompt, my best friend's take on why you should date me, where your friend can hype you up. Not only does this make the profile creation less daunting, but it's not always easy to see your own green flags. So to test it out, I asked UA some fun prompts to get her take on what I could put if I was dating again. So the first one, how long have we known each other? What was your first impression of me and how has that changed? Julie and I have known each other for almost 10 years. My first impression of Julie was that she's very social, but I've learned that she has a lot more depth to her beyond the social butterfly that she is. My next prompt, what do you think are my green flags? I would say she's deeply loyal. She believes in love, curious mindset, and she is fearlessly ambitious. And then last but not least, what kind of friend am I? Julie is the kind of friend who will always have your back, no matter what. Damn, that feels nice to hear. So download Hinge and try voice prompts today. Then find some one worth deleting the app for. Hi, I'm Yui Xu. And I'm Julie Kraftchik. We're active daters turned dating sociologists. Here to dive into everything modern dating and relationships. Welcome to the Dateable Podcast. Welcome back, friends. We are Yui and Julie, back for more of Love Radio. On a 1.5 FM. People are like, oh, am I in the right place right now? That was a good uh, sexy radio voice there. Here to answer all of your love questions. Uh, is this what you do at night? Practice? How do you know? Have a side gig? How do you know that's what I did? <laughs> I used to listen to a lot of late night radio in high school because that was kind of our podcast back in the day. Yeah. I was like, does this actually exist? Okay, so this is a story. I won't like out our friend. This is a mutual friend of ours. I don't think you know the story. She wrote it to Dr. Drew. And <gasps> this was when she was dating her husband at the beginning. And she was unsure about, <laughs> was he ambitious enough? Was he you know, career driven enough? And she called in to the late night radio. They put her on air and heard it. And they were just like, <laughs> shut the fuck up. Like, this guy treats you great. Just get over it. <laughs> <laughs> and it helped her move forward. So. <laughs> Look, and now she's married to him. So it worked out. Good for Dr. Drew. I used to give shout outs to boys I had crushes on on the radio. Did you ever do that? <laughs> no. I'd be like, is there someone you want to give a shout out to? Dial 1-800-da-da-da-da-da-da. Oh, God. So I did that. I remember doing that. There was a guy named Bradley. I was so madly in love with him. And I used to give him shout outs all the time. <laughs> he didn't even go to my school. <laughs> like, I don't even know if he knew my name. But I'd be like, this message is for Bradley. This is UA. I just want to say I really love you from afar. And if you you get this message on air, give me a call. And I would give my phone number and the radio station would be like, beep, 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 beep. <laughs> like, little girl, oh please do not God. give out your number in public. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Did I tell you I used to work at a radio station back in the you day? Did? I was an what? Intern. Look at that foreshadowing. I was in the promotions department. I wasn't actually on the on air team at all. But yeah, I guess there was something there. All that to set you up to talk about this very deep topic today. Oh, yes. It's a good one. We're just doing another one of those episodes where it's just Julie and I to discuss a topic that we have such a strong interest in. So you'll hear our voices on this episode. Yes. You know, this is a topic that we feel very, very strongly about, but we did a call out in our Facebook group of what type of topics are you interested in for this upcoming season? And someone put this down and we're like, this is a good topic. Like, what is the line of when you should stay and try to like make something work versus leave and go? This topic is such a popular one because we are told such contradictory messages about relationships. Mm -hmm. On one hand, 
hand, you're told relationships are hard. You got to work at them. And on the other hand, we're told when you're with the right person, things should be easy and you shouldn't have to work too hard in the relationship. Mm -hmm. But once you're in a relationship and you feel like you're really trying hard to make it work, what is that point of saying, I've tried hard enough. I've tried my very best. I've tried everything and it hasn't worked. Yeah. So it's time to get out. Or is it the point of like, we could try harder. And this applies to when you're in like the committed full on relationship. But I think it even extends earlier. We hear of people all the time being like, oh, I went on one or two dates. Should I go out with them again? You never know. Like, when is that inflection point that you should give something more of a chance versus cut your loss and try to meet other people? Mm-hmm. And I think the other piece of this is so often there's a camp that doesn't try hard enough, right? When things get tough in a relationship, or when, you know, maybe it's not fireworks or the spark at first sight. But then on the flip side, I've been here before. I don't know about you, UA, but like when you overstay and you know something's not working, yet you just continue to try to make it work. And we see this all the time, especially like when people are in situationships. It's like, oh, if they only see how good of a partner I can be, I'm going to just keep trying to like make them see what they could be missing out on instead of just being like, this person doesn't want the same thing as me. I'm going to move on. How many times have you talked to someone who've been in a long-term relationship and you ask them how long it was Mm -hmm. and they always say two years too long or one year too long or should have ended at the second year? And I would argue that there is no overstaying in a relationship. I feel like the overstaying years are the trying years. You're just trying, right? We only think we overstayed in hindsight. But when you're in the relationship, I get it. Like you really just want to try your very best. So as we go into this conversation, maybe we can just get that out of our heads. It's like, You're not overstaying. You're just trying to work through the entire process. I agree with you in most scenarios, but I do think there are some when like you're clearly not on the same page and some of it's in fantasy world. And I've been there before. And I'm saying this from someone that's been there. Mm. Like when someone's clearly not telling you like they don't want a serious relationship, I've stayed to try to make something work where it's just an uphill battle. Mm -hmm. And I think we also need to recognize those situations too. Because yes, if two people are fully in it, trying to make it work, I agree with you. But a lot of times that's not the case. And it's like we have selective vision of what we want to see is happening. I wonder about that sometimes, right? Because our conversation today will be about your voluntary decision to leave a relationship. When should you leave and when should you stay? But in some situations, like in your previous relationship, you almost need something to happen or realize something for you to want to make that change. Yeah. And I have a friend currently in this situation. She just cannot see, although everybody around her sees that this relationship relationship cannot last. I almost feel like she needs something externally to happen for her to like really see this clearly. Well, we're going to go through it today. We're excited to dig in very deep because as you could already see, there's a lot of different scenarios. This is a very wide topic, but we're going to go there. But before we do, let's hear a message from our sponsors. This episode is sponsored by Via. We all know there are things that can help set the mood in the bedroom, but did you know a little THC could also do that? Yes, Via has developed a unique blend of pleasure-enhancing cannabinoids, libido-strengthening herbs, and a low dose of THC all into one mind-blowing gummy called High Love. This gummy, wow, it will awaken your senses, increase blood flow, and intensify any sexual experience. I've been pleasantly surprised by the High Love gummies because it is just the right amount of THC for me to have a good time without feeling sleepy. And hey, if THC is not your thing, Via also offers a wide array of other gummies without it. And everything legally ships in 50 states with discreet packaging directly to your door. So if you're over 21, you can get Get 15% off and a free pack of award winning Dreams THC plus CBN sleep gummies with our exclusive code DATABLE at viahemp.com. That's V I I A H E M P.com. Let the gummies work their magic. Head to viahemp.com and use the code DATABLE to receive 15% off and one free sample of their sleepy dream gummies. That's viahemp.com and use the code D A T E A B L E at checkout. Take your passion and pleasure to a whole new level with high love from Via Hemp. 
As you know, I recently left my corporate job and I've been in total recovery mode all about self-care. One of my new routines is the nighttime shower before bed. There's just something about washing away the day and that reflection that's been super helpful for me. I've been using one of our partners, Osea's Mega Moisture Duo. This combo body oil and body lotion are so freaking incredible. It literally feels like I'm at a spa. I realize that the secret is seaweed and other skin level ingredients that are normally reserved for face products. And that's why I was so excited when Osea became one of our partners. And, you know, we're so grateful for partners like this because one, they keep the show going, but they're also super good for all of our listeners and for our own well-being. So if you want to have that nighttime bliss like I am doing, you can get 10% off your first order site-wide with code DATABLE at OseaMalibu.com. You'll get free samples with every order and free shipping on orders over for $60. So head to OSEAMalibu.com and use the code DATABLE for 10% off. Let us know which products you end up going with. Share them in social. Super excited to see what you end up choosing. This episode is made possible by Badlands Pets. As you all know, Mojo, my precious baby, is the reason why I found love in the first place. He made me feel love again. So I would do anything to ensure his health and longevity. And actress Katherine Heigl, and I have that in common, she's helped save over 16,000 dogs through her foundation. And after doing a ton of research, she feels there's one place we can look to to improve any dog's health, and that's their food. So fortunately, she found that just by adding a few special superfoods to her dog's food, she saw huge transformations in their health. So she's made a 20-minute video explaining step-by-step how anyone can do the same thing to see incredible changes in their dog's health. I've definitely re-looked at what I'm feeding Mojo and making sure that hey, he only has one life to live and I want to make sure it's the best damn life. So if you want to keep your dog healthy and happy, go to badlandsfood.com slash datable and watch Catherine's video right now. Again, that's B-A-D-L-A-N-D-S-F-O-O-D.com slash D-A-T-E-A-B-L-E. Living with ADHD can be a challenge and dating with ADHD is definitely a challenge. We've heard many of you say, but finding the right care and proper tools needed to succeed can be life-changing. Done is an online ADHD care platform that can get you all the resources you need to help manage your ADHD. Online visits, refills, and a 24-7 care team made for you. In just one minute, Dunn's online assessment can help kickstart your ADHD treatment journey. With experienced clinicians, worry fill refills, and online visits, you can start getting personalized care as soon as today or tomorrow. So contact an expert team that can help you around the clock and get a personalized treatment plan just for you. Here's how you do it. Take a free one-minute assessment and book an appointment with a licensed ADHD clinician as soon as the next day. Get continuous care, one-click refills, insurance coverage, and 24-7 care team support with Done for just $79 a month. And pharmacy co-pays as low as $0. Visit get.donefirst.com slash podcast to learn more. That's get.donefirst.com slash podcast to learn more. Done. Turn ADHD into your strength. As you're evaluating whether you should stay or should you go, what are some questions to consider as you make your decision? I think the first one I would think of is like, are we in this together? Mm -hmm. Because there's so many situations that are one sided or that DTR exclusivity conversation hasn't occurred. I think it's really hard to even have a foundation if you're not like on a level playing field. So I think before anything else to stay in something like that should be number one. And if you haven't had that conversation or series of conversations, that doesn't mean that like you should be going immediately. But I think it's a time to sit down and like have a conversation of like, where does everyone stand in terms of the relationship? Because like, what do you do from there if you don't have that baseline? I think you can definitely tell when you're pulling most of the weight or you're pulling your partner along. Definitely. I've been in relationships where one person initiated the therapy work, initiate the check-ins, initiate the mind fullness work, initiate the couples retreats. And at some point you go, 
all right, what is the effort they're putting into this? And if they're not putting the effort that I'm putting into it, then you're not really in it together. Yeah. And we even hear this like in early stage dating too, right? Like people that are like, I'm the one that's like making all the plans. Like I'm the one that's always reaching out. Yeah. This is like across the board, whatever stage of a relationship you're in. Like this is number one, in my opinion. It's not about an equal partnership. It's about both people wanting to make an effort. Yeah. And that could look like 110%. It could look like 80%. But at least two people have to be willing to make an effort. The question that I would have is, is the relationship mostly good? Yeah. And I say that because the relationship is not 100% always good. You're not always like no. butterflies and rainbows and like shitting out unicorn dust all the time. But you are, <laughs> if you can say it's 80% good and then there's 20% where we're working on things, yeah. then you're in a good place because it means that you enjoy the relationship more than the time that you're spending on improving it. Definitely. I mean, another one, too, is like, how do you feel around this person? Like, we've said this one is such a barometer of so much. But, mm. you know, do I feel like my best self? Do I feel super anxious? Like, that's a huge sign of if of a relationship is right for you. And I think the person that you're with, even if you're just early stage dating, or you've been together for years and years, you should feel like a good version of yourself. Yeah. Like, I remember I had a friend that was dating this guy, and it was just like high drama. And she felt like she was even becoming high drama because of this guy. And I think that is a sign that like this is not a good thing for you. Like if you're like long term not liking who you are around this person. Oh, that rings so true. I just remember being so madly in love with this guy and he was just not very communicative. And it brought me to this point where I didn't even recognize myself anymore. I found myself mm -hmm. waiting for him outside of his place of employment, hoping to <laughs> run into him. I was like, who the fuck am I? I remember it was a rainy day. I didn't even have an umbrella and I'm just standing outside of his office, hoping to serendipitously run into to him because I hadn't heard from him in days. When you look in the mirror and go, nope, he's not bringing out the best side of me. <laughs> Get out. Yeah. I mean, honestly, if I was to date today, if someone didn't bring out a good side of me or I didn't feel like my true self with them, I would cut out. Even if everything else was great. Yeah. Like, I think this is so paramount because it's like, if you're signing up to like live a life with someone, like, don't you want to be a good version of yourself? Like, don't you want to feel good? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I want to feel good. That's one of the metrics of progress, I think, in a relationship is like, how do I feel? Do I feel good about myself? Yeah. And that's another question I would ask in this relationship is, what are your metrics for progress? And is there a timeline yeah. for decision making or these major milestones that you want to hit in your relationship? And I don't mean like marriage and kids, all that. But a lot of the point of contention in a relationship is both parties not agreeing on something. And that's inevitable. And if you can come to time box that and say in six months, we're going to make a decision about this. Yeah. And let's measure our progress along the way. Then it shows effort on both ends. And two, you can see the productivity of your work that you're putting into the relationship too. Yeah, I mean, this is something that I was maybe a little naive to. Like I have thought like, oh, once I meet the right person, like everything will just fall into place and we'll be 100% <laughs> in sync at all times. And that is just not how it works because you're two different human beings. And I think what got me to see that my partner was different, even though we weren't necessarily on the same page 100% of the time at the same time is that we were working for the same direction. And we were also both taking steps yeah. to get there. And, you know, I think they need to, first of all, be open to doing that. Like we hear of so many situations where someone's like, oh, they're not ready to DTR yet, but like I haven't actually talked to them about it. Or like there's yeah. no plan to get there. It's just not going to just happen magically. Both parties need to be making that effort and you have to see that. Yeah. I think the other one that kind of goes with this too is like, do you trust this? person like in the sense like do you trust that they're gonna get there like do you trust that their words and actions align like in your core do you like believe in this relationship and this is a hard one because so many times like our own trust issues get in the way but I think deep down we do know if someone like feels like they can be dependable or not 
And I think that one is so overlooked. Yeah. And I would even take that a step further and ask, can you trust yourself to believe this relationship and see this relationship through? Yeah. Because so many times in relationship, we put so much pressure on our partner to do what they're supposed to do. But if we take accountability for our own actions, too, then there really is no opportunity for failure here if you both trust yourselves to see this relationship through. Mm -hmm. I would also ask, what is your general reaction when people ask you how the relationship is going? Ooh, that's a good one. I think this is so telling. Your <laughs> your yeah. gut reaction when someone goes, so how are things going with what's his name or what's her name? And if your gut reaction is like, oh, it's a lot of work. Relationships are hard versus, oh, relationships are hard, but, you know, it's so worth it. Yeah. Those are two very different sentiments. And I've certainly talked to friends where it's the former and you're like, oh, shit, things are definitely not going well, are they? Or too, like at the beginning of a relationship, if all you're doing is talking to your friends, like trying to analyze every last thing versus oh, yeah. that is like a telltale sign to me. Like if I remember like with my relationship, like I knew it was different because I had nothing to talk about with my friends. And that's like, yeah, you don't need that gossip. And I think a lot of times we go to our friends because like things aren't going well or we aren't able to have the conversations we need to with this person mm -hmm. another one too that sticks out for me is like the character of this person like who are they outside of like the romantic interest of yours like if you had no romantic connection with this person would you want to be friends with them yeah do you think that they are like a stand-up quality person taking sex relationship off the table do you respect this person maybe that's like the core of it like do you respect them do you feel like they uphold like integrity and they have empathy and all the qualities like you want in a partner like if your friend was dating them would you be like this is a great pick for you mm, yeah it's such a key one because sometimes we get blinded by lust we could be very attracted to someone but then we forget to look at them as a holistic person and then we often overlook some of the not so great characteristics too yeah my mom brought this up the other day and I thought it was so brilliant she's like do you have a rental mindset or a buying mindset when it comes to your partner? Mm. When you look at places to rent, you're always looking at the short-term fixes. You're like, oh, this window's broken, but I can live with that for a few years. It's fine, right? I can just repaint this. But when you're buying a place, you think deep and hard about some of the foundational yeah. issues, right? Yeah. And you think, oh, I probably need to regrout this and I probably need to do a gut renovation on this kitchen because things are falling apart. When we have a more of a buying mindset to relationships, it means our commitment level is there. And if you feel like both of you are buying into each other, you're investing for the long term versus just thinking about these short term fixes that, you know, as we all know, with rental properties, things will always break no matter what. I think it's the difference of like a relationship or a partner. There is a key difference of like, this is someone that, mm -hmm. you know, will do the relationship -y things like are they an activity partner? That's like the rental mindset. Like there's someone yeah. to do things with short term, or are they like going to be really in it with you? And and, you know, when you're down and not having a good day, are they like the first person to cheer you up versus like they're there to like go get drinks with you? Because the spectrum of what a relationship is, is so drastically different. And even from early stages, I think you can start to see signs of like if someone's that like long term prospect buying mode versus rental. Yeah. And it's such a huge one because I think when you're in the rental mindset, like you said, just in a relationship mindset, just like I just need a roof over my head. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> just like, I just need things to fulfill my basic needs. But if someone were to say, uh, you got to start paying mortgage on this, you might be out right away. You might say like, actually, no, I don't see a long term yeah. potential with this property. Yeah. I mean, I think the conflict one, like from every expert we've talked to of like, what is the key to a long term relationship is like how you do conflicts with each other. And I think in this rental mode, maybe you're not even bringing up conflict in the first place, or you're not having it because you're just yeah. not deep at all. Like we hear of people that are like, oh, yeah, I'm in a relationship. I see my partner like once every four months. It's like that is 
no. not the same as like if you're like living with someone doing life with them every day. And conflict, I think, is so telling. Like if someone can meet you and have a conversation and try to, again, work as a team to like get somewhere versus dismiss your feelings and say like, I don't want to talk about this. Like there's so many extremes here that are going to give you the line of sight. And it goes back to like what we were talking about earlier. Like, do you want to live a life with someone for years and years where you can't express yourself freely? That seems like that would be just so torturous to do that. So I think if you're at a crossroads in your relationship, let's say you haven't either addressed conflict or you have and it hasn't gone well, like they aren't really listening to you and what you have to say. Mm -hmm. I think this is like a huge point of like evaluation, especially if you've had the conversation, it hasn't gone well, you at least know. But if you haven't even had the conversation, like have something happen, like get deep enough that something can happen so you can learn from it. So those are some of the questions that we would have on evaluating the relationship. Obviously, every relationship is different. Yeah. So Julie and I brainstormed all different scenarios of relationships <laughs> and dating yes. where you may be at this crossroads. So let's go through each one of them. You've been seeing someone new that you're into and they told you that they are not ready for a serious relationship right now. You're fine keeping it casual, although you do know that you want to eventually be in a relationship. Do you keep seeing this person to see if they change their mind or see where this might go? Or do you cut it? This is where I feel like you really have to know what you're looking for. Yeah. Because I've been there, I wanted to keep it cool. And I wanted to say, I'm not looking for anything serious right now. But eventually, I want a relationship. I feel like that's not an answer. I think that's a cop out. The answer is you either want something casual, or you want a relationship. This person can say it clearly, they just want something casual. <laughs> so what can you indicate clearly, we just have to be more honest with ourselves on what we're looking for instead of like trying to come off cool and easygoing. So yeah, the answer is if you are truly looking for a relationship, cut out while you can. Yeah, and you can't change people. I think if you're going into this thinking like, oh, the more they get to know me or, yeah. you know, they'll start to want a relationship, that's just an uphill battle that right. it's not worth fighting. I feel like if I could take back all those years that I tried to make people who said they didn't want a relationship yeah. want a relationship with me, like, I would have met my person years ago. <laughs> like that was what was getting in my way yes. is that I was trying to make things work with people that just wouldn't work with. And the first sign of someone saying they're not ready for something serious or committed or whatever it is, if you want a relationship, in my opinion, that's the time to bounce. Like that is it because yes. you can't change someone's mind. All that's going to result in is a lot of heartache and you're going to miss the opportunity to meet someone that actually is on the same page as you. Listen, this might be mind blowing to a bring up here, but this is like a recent epiphany of mine is that when someone's not ready for a relationship and you still hang out with them, every little thing they do that leans towards the relationship side, you think, oh my gosh, this person is so amazing. They definitely like me. Mm -hmm. Like the most basic things, like they could reach for your hand and you think, oh yeah, totally. oh yeah, like it's this going somewhere. There's magic here. Like the most basic affections you're going to take as way more than what they actually mean. But in an actual like healthy relationship, these are just what you want, like the basic expectations of a relationship, right? Yeah. So this is why a toxic relationship would start this way. It's because you take every breadcrumb way more seriously than you would in a normal, healthy relationship. That is so true. And it's like what we were talking about earlier, some of the core things, you're not in it together. Mm -mm. <laughs> you probably don't feel good about yourself if you're constantly wondering what's going on with this person. Oof. And you certainly aren't going to be able to resolve any sort of conflict if this person basically told you that they have no intention of having any conversations or doing anything difficult in a relationship. So you're not set up for success. Get out. Yes, get out. <laughs> Here's another scenario. You're in an early relationship. Let's say you've been dating for three to six months. You're exclusive DTR and all that. But there's already a lot of conflict. You're fighting a lot. Mm. What happened to the honeymoon period? <laughs> Did you just skip that over? Is this an indicator that the relationship is doomed and you should get the fuck out? Or it's just saying that you're both willing to show your true colors earlier? I would say it's like, how are you resolving this conflict? If you're yeah. just yelling at each other and nothing seems to 
change and it's just constant, then that might not be a good situation. But if you are just, for whatever reason, it's just coming out earlier than it does in other relationships, that actually could be a positive, pending how you're actually going about these conversations. Like, is it respectful? Do you feel seen and heard? Do you feel like you're making progress? Like, does each one kind of uncover something new? Or are you literally dwelling on the same thing over and over again? And honestly, if you see this relationship going somewhere, like maybe it is time to enlist couples therapy. Mm. I could see people being like, that's really early. Like, should I just go? But if everything else is good and you're just having a lot of conflict bubble up, maybe it's that you don't know how to deal with each other's conflict styles and having that third party there to help navigate it could actually set you up to have a really great relationship. I think this is one of those ones that you could cut out really too early if you just don't even have the tools to work with it pending like, again, it's done in a way that's like respectful. It's not just people like yelling all the time and not going anywhere. Yeah, I mean, end of the day, is this relationship fun? (laughs) That's the question. Well, yeah. Are you still enjoying the relationship? If you're not enjoying it because you're fighting all the time, yeah, it's time to get out. But in those early months of dating, so many of us try so hard to avoid conflict. We're in that rental mentality, short term, band-aid solutions. It's fine. I don't need to address this. I don't need to come forward with this. I don't need to express myself this way. It's not a big deal right now. So I do commend a relationship that can put all this Mm -hmm. forward and not try to hide it. But like you said, Julie, it's how you come out of these conflicts. If you feel every time you come out of conflict and you feel better about the relationship, that's a great fucking indicator. That's like, wow, you've reached really the next level of your relationship. Or do you feel closer to your partner? Do you feel like you're understanding Mm. them better? Like those are all really important things. You make a good point, though. Literally all you're doing is having conflict. That's not a good relationship. Like there needs to be (laughs) balance. And, you know, maybe you are just spending so much time together that you're still doing the super fun things and getting to know each other, but also having this conflict. If that's the case, then it definitely seems salvageable. But if every time you're together, and that's all you're doing. I can see how that be draining as well. For sure. Yeah. Scenario three, you're nearing your two year anniversary. You love your partner as a person, but you're not sure if you're in love with them. You've had that gold standard relationship, though, in the past, but it crashed and burned because they weren't ready to commit. Your current partner is all in and you're both getting older. You want to settle down and have kids, except you don't feel the emotional connection with them. It's sometimes even hard to make conversation with them. It feels like you're on entirely different pages. Should you try to make it work or see what else is out there? Ooh, so tough. So tough. Because you've invested the time and there's nothing glaringly wrong with the relationship. Yeah. Yet there's no emotional connection. I would argue because I've personally been in this before is that when I was in one of these relationships, I thought it was my partner not opening up. But in hindsight, I realized I did not allow myself to show love to my partner. Mm. So if you're in something like this, think about what can I do more of to open myself to love and to show the love to my partner? And maybe that will unlock something for you. And if it doesn't, I think that answers your question right there. Yeah, that's a really good point to go inward on it because yeah, this one, it's like the typical, everything's good on paper. We're going in the same direction, but the love isn't there. And yeah, I get it, especially when you've had a slew of ones that can't get off the ground. It's really hard to like walk away from something like this. But ultimately, if your heart is not in it and you're always wondering what else is out there or you don't enjoy just like being with this person, like what are you doing? Yeah. I like the idea, though, of trying, like not just throwing in the towel, but like seeing what else could be done and where you might be holding back because you can't change someone's personality. At the end of the day, you need to decide like, is this person right for me? And maybe they're not. And that's okay. You're actually doing them a favor, too, by letting them go at this stage. even though it can be really freaking hard right but can you imagine like being with someone just because like you're ready to have kids and like start a life with them but like they don't really like you like that's not a place that anyone wants to be that's the worst i know so yes i like the idea of seeing what you can do to change your own mindset but if you're really feeling like you're forcing it and it's just not there this one might be a one that you walk away from in my opinion 
sometimes you just really have to think, am I holding my partner hostage? Yeah. It's a really hard position to be in. But Sonica and I were having this conversation the other day and she's like, what if some woman is holding my partner hostage because she's trying so hard to make it work? I know. And he would be so much better with me and I'm just waiting for her to set him free. (laughs) (laughs) Like, that's a really good way of looking at it. Don't hold people hostage because if you truly know that there's someone more compatible for them and for you. It's just so unfair to hold each other hostage in this relationship. I mean, I've had this conversation with a few friends of like them being like, oh, I need to just communicate more. I need to talk to them. But it ultimately comes down to them just not liking their partner's personality. I'm like, you can't yeah. have that conversation. Like, there's no conversation here. If the only conversation you could have is with yourself. Like, is this the right person for me? You can't tell someone to change their sense of humor or whatever it is that you feel like you would jive better with. You need to accept people for who they are. You do. A telling sign is always when people ask, oh, tell me about your partner. And if you start with all the on paper stuff, oh, yeah. then you know that yeah. you're not jiving personality wise. You know, if you start with, well, she has her PhD yeah. and she is a professor, you know, then it's like, OK, but what about her character? Why do you two get along? That's always very telling. Let's take a quick break to hear from our sponsor. Here's the next scenario. Your relationship is 80% great, but there's just one issue that keeps coming up over and over again that you two can't resolve. An example would be Mm. your stance on marriage. Mm. Maybe everything else is going great and you're in couples counseling and you're doing all the work and you're in therapy and just you two just cannot agree on the topic of marriage. This is a tough one. I mean, I think it depends what it is. Marriage to me feels like a big one. If it's something that's yeah that you could get behind a little easier, maybe you can compromise. But I don't think you can compromise on like big life decisions and what you want. I don't think you should be compromising on that. For me, it's a no go. I would have to get out at that point. Like if I really felt like I wasn't aligned with my partner and deep down in my heart, I knew it wasn't something I could just like push away. Probably also depends on your own views on marriage and how important it is. If you could take it or leave it, then there's negotiation and room to work with someone. Same with kids, right? Like, but if you really want one of these and the other person doesn't, it just feels like it's always going to be hard to like get aligned with them on it. Well, what I've learned from relationships is that decisions aren't black and white and you can't expect people to make 180 degree decisions overnight. So it's much harder to say, oh, you don't want marriage. I want you to want marriage. That's really hard for someone to digest, right? But I think what does work in a relationship is both people willing to understand each other's side of why they want or don't want something. And so many times we beat an issue to death because we're trying to argue for our own side. Yeah, We're just in this debate because we're just trying to prove ourselves to be right. What if you were to take the stance of your partner and try to argue for them to see their side? And maybe that will open up more empathy, more neural pathways of how you can connect on a more cerebral level so that you can start walking towards each other on the issue instead Mm -hmm. of trying to prove you're right. What about like if someone tells you they don't want marriage early on? Is that enough to say like, this isn't going to work? I'm not going to pursue this? For me, I think it might be. Yeah. And I think it's such a funny one because I legit just met some new people the other night and everybody had a very strong stance on marriage. But when you ask them why, it's all circumstantial. One guy just got divorced. Mm. It's like, it was a bad divorce. I was divorced three months ago. I don't want to get married. If I were to ask him three years from now, that could all change. So Someone else said, I definitely want to get married. And this girl had been single for 10 years and she's like trying to look for the love of her life. I get that. This is why I feel like the decision on marriage and kids feel like these should be made with someone, not just like on your own. Yeah. So I do think finding a partner who's willing to make decisions with you is more important than someone who comes in with a fully formed decision, unless if they have a really, really strong reason for why they feel that way. Yeah. I mean, I think it comes down to like how strong they feel because like I know for me like having kids I could go either way then yes having a partner that I could envision that with that changed it but I do feel like you're still fighting an uphill battle and I get that like in 
three months someone could change their mind yeah but personally for me like if i really wanted something i think at this stage of life i wouldn't entertain someone that didn't want it because yeah. even if hypothetically in six months they change i just feel like it's so much easier to work with someone that can work with you opposed to like have a hard stance that opposes yours for sure if you have a very strong stance on what you want you should absolutely go after what you want so the next one is you went on a great first date the whole time you were laughing and felt like your true self, like you are with your closest friends. And at the end of the night, they told you it was amazing to see you. And the next day they made plans. The only thing is that you weren't so attracted to them. It wasn't that you didn't find them attractive at all, but they weren't like, I want to rip my clothes off and hook up with this person right this minute. <laughs> Should you go out again? If you know yourself enough, then you know how attraction builds for you. For me, attraction builds over time. I've never met someone on a first date and said, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> but over time, I get to that hell yes, fuck yes, all of it. So I know that if I were in this situation, I would want to see it through. But also some of you can feel that attraction right away from a first date. And you know yourself that that attraction can only go down from the first date. <laughs> then maybe you have to reevaluate. It's all about just knowing yourself. Yeah. For years, I was definitely that person that was like, oh, there needs to be the spark, the chemistry, the connection. But I feel like the best relationships are slower paced. That develops over time. And, you know, I think like even with my car partner, I wouldn't say there was like fireworks. I was attracted very similar to this scenario. Like I was attracted, but I wasn't like, oh, my God, this is it. I'm so attracted. But I would say the people that I was like that with, it did not end in like a good, healthy relationship. No. Like there's something of, you you know, like the people that you have just like the hot, like hook up one night stand sex with like that isn't who you end up dating like for the long haul. And of course, like there are exceptions to the rule. I'm not gonna say it never happens. But usually like that isn't the characteristics that ends up being that committed long term partner. I think so many people get hung up on this. I agree, though, like if you just have no attraction for someone, that's very different than this scenario where you have attraction, just not like, mm -hmm. oh, my God, like I want to hook up right this second attraction i think alcohol plays uh, yeah plays a lot into this i'm trying to think back of all the times that i had immediate attraction with someone and oh, i was yeah. absolutely fucking Hammered. wasted yeah exactly i've never been sober and said yes fireworks butterflies it's a good no. point so, so it's basically it's not mm -hmm. attraction in chemistry it's just how drunk are you <laughs> that's what it comes down to yeah i think that is what it is it's your alcohol <laughs> level <laughs> i totally agree because i guarantee like on my first day with my partner we were not drinking that much but if i was like hammered i probably would have been much more different Next scenario, you're both putting in 110% to try to make the relationship work. Endless therapy, couples counseling, self-help books, group therapy, seminars, panels, quizzes, assessments. Oh my God. <laughs> and then you find yourself only doing that and the relationship is not so fun. What do you do? Just like even hearing that made me tired. <laughs> I think there needs to be a point where, you know, you are just living your relationship, like all the studying and working on the relationship. We've seen relationships like this happen and they just blow up mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, like you're with someone to enrich your life. And of course, there is certain amount of effort and I hate the word work, but like quote unquote work that's needed. But it shouldn't feel like you're like studying for an exam to be with this person. Yeah. Like trying to ace all your tests. It just feels like not worth it. So I would say for this couple, like stop doing what you're doing and just go on a date night like tonight and just see what happens. I would actually say go get fucked up. This is a great time <laughs> to drink. This is the reverse one of the this last is the reverse, one. <laughs> yeah. You want to have fun in a relationship. In fact, a relationship should be mostly fun and the work should be secondary to that. And if you're spending most of your time working, you will no longer see this as a rewarding relationship. It'll just be work. Seeing how you feel after doing that fun night out or whatever you end up doing is going to be... Yeah pivotal to decide like should i stay or should i go if you remembered okay this is what i'm fighting for this is what i'm working towards that will give you the ammunition to be in that time when it is difficult but if you don't even see like the light of day of why am i doing what i'm doing like there's no motivation to keep doing it that's just gonna fizzle out or you'll cheat 
<laughs> right. Or you'll try to find that fun elsewhere. Or miserable. Mm-hmm. That is all the scenarios we came up with. There's so many more, but you know, that's enough for now. <laughs> there are so many other ways so that many, you could <laughs> so <many scenarios>. evaluate <laughs> whether you should stay or go. But this is like the million dollar question. It's always a million dollar question. When have you tried hard enough? And when should you try harder? There is no right answer. So I hope yeah. that with anybody going through this, because I certainly went through this in my last relationship, is that I can just listen to my intuition a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Like, what is my gut telling me? My gut may be saying, you know what? Good job for trying, but this is just not going to work out. Maybe that's what it's just telling you. And that is okay to listen to. I ignored all those signs in my last relationship because I was blinded by the fact that we tried so hard, that we were trying so hard. But the trying so hard was what drove us away. So there is also the flip side of trying too hard. It's very difficult. I agree with you. It's like what in retrospect, like I think I got through a hard period with my partner, but it was positive. So I'm like, oh, I did try the right amount. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if you end up breaking up with someone, you're going to be like, oh, like that maybe was too much. So I agree with you that like it's way easier in retrospect to say it. So if you're in the thick of something and you keep going back and forth or you don't know, yeah, it's so much easier in retrospect, clearly, like when you're out of it. But I think if you're in a situation or in a relationship that you're just not sure about, like have some grace, it's going to become clear eventually. Whether that day that you just ask yourself, maybe even reflecting back on some of the questions that we talked about up front, like that could make it more clear for you. Or, you know, being more objective, like if a friend was in this situation, what advice would I give them? Taking yourself out of it, that could help too. Because I think when we're in it, we have so many like emotions tied to it that it can be hard to make those decisions that need to be made. It takes a lot of courage to leave a relationship. A lot of courage that most people cannot do. So think about that, like how much courage it takes to leave and how much you're willing to be challenged by that courage. Every day I think about that. Like I really hope that in any future relationships, I will have the courage to leave and leave on a good note. Yeah. And I think even in relationships where you know you're not getting your needs met, it's a situation ship or whatever, and you want it to be more, it's still hard to leave because you don't know what's on the other side. It's like that present bias, right? You only see what you currently have. You don't know if there's a better partner out there for you. But if you talk to most people that have met like their people, they'll say that the best thing they did was leaving the person that was not it for them because you can't find the right person if you're with the wrong one. Like it's that simple. Yep. Don't hold people hostage. Let's pay it forward here. Don't hold yourself hostage. Don't hold other people hostage in a relationship because you have to release them to the right people. And until you release yourself and the other person, you can't be with the right people. So lots of food for thought here. There's never a right or simple answer to any relationship. They're so complicated and so nuanced. Yeah. But it helps to really ask yourself the questions we listed here. So yeah, go back and listen to this episode and (laughs) write down all all the yeah. questions that we had. And then trying, you know, we talk about leaving, but I know for me, like trying to keep something going, I had to confront a lot of my own shit with that. So sometimes it is actually easier to leave. Yes. So you should also pat yourself on the back. If you are doing the work to get through these difficult times, of course, it's looking at the relationship holistically. And is it just work or is it a combination? But I think we need to give people credit that are trying also, especially when it comes against the grain and doing it in ways that are helping them grow as well. Absolutely. Yes. Applauding everyone who's trying their darnest best. (laughs) All right. If you can try your best, we like it when you try to leave a five-star rating and review in Apple Podcasts. And what's better than trying is actually doing. (laughs) So five stars and maybe in the body of the review, you can tell us about how you promise to not hold people hostage. You know, just say that that's sentence. I promise not to hold people hostage. And so we can release the right people into the world for the right people and for you as well. It always comes back to finding the right person for you. And with that, we are going to wrap up this episode. Stay Stay dateable. dateable.
The Dateable Podcast is part of the Frolic Media Network. Find more podcasts you'll love at frolic.media slash podcast. You can follow us on Instagram at Dateable Podcast and visit datablepodcast.com for access to all the episodes in our premium programs. Also, make sure to subscribe today if you haven't already on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcast platform so you are the first to get all the latest episodes. And most importantly, stay dateable. Thank you.